You're watching Brain Gains. Yeah. What's up everyone and welcome to Brain Games, the show brought to you live from bodybuilding.com headquarters. My name is Tyler, this is my good friend Alec. How you doing man? Sure. We're, 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 we're doing well. It's, uh, it's a little uh, gray outside, hoping for a little more. It's kind of gross. I'm sore too though. I was doing deadlifts yesterday. Not feeling so good about that one right now, but you know. But anyone, well, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a live show brought to you from bodybuilding.com. Don't forget, this is an open format show. So if you have any questions about what we're going to talk about today, please feel free to put them in chat. Uh, if you missed the show today, if you're uh, catching us on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, make sure you send us an email at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. So, Alec, let's hop right into it. All right, those who have been frequent viewers of ours, we like to throw in a couple stories related to either health, nutrition, lifting, a whole, whole nine yards. Just doesn't necessarily have to be on topic of what we're doing, but we just like to kind of do some fun little facts for you guys. So, for me, the first one I'm uh, gonna bring up is those who are aware of the gigantic Shrek of a man, Brian Shaw, he's a he, big fella. He recently did a video with Juju Mufu where he literally bends a cast iron pan. Should be a link in the in the uh, description. Uh, it's entertaining. Like actually say. a frying pan that you cook in and he bends it. Like as in, you know, put it against his body and have to like torque it, yeah. But he did it, it was a thing. We thought about showing it here on the stream but then we realized YouTube probably wouldn't be super happy about that. So anyway, check out the link, it's there in chat. It'll also be in the uh, description down below. Go check it out, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, so as you know, I generally tend to, tend to lean towards more of the science-y stories, so we have a couple of cool, interesting studies that came out recently. Uh, one of them is from the International Society of Sport Nutrition, and it is called The Metabolic Impact of Protein Feeding Prior to Moderate Intensity Treadmill Exercise in a Fasted State. So I know a lot of people like to do fasted treadmill exercise. There's, uh, there's the understanding that if you do your exercise fasted, supposedly your body tends to burn a little bit more fat as, mm -hmm. as opposed to carbs. And so this was a study that wanted to look at, uh, A, is that real? And B, how does consuming just protein before your exercise affect how your body metabolizes carbs and or fat? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they took 11 healthy college males, they put them uh, in four different sessions, so it was a crossover study. I'm not going to read through the whole entire thing. If you want the full study, please send us an email, brain.gains, bodybuilding.com. Uh, but basically what we found out is that uh, adding protein to the mix, going into it not completely fasted, but taking a protein, whether it's casein or WPI, uh, whey protein isolate, actually does have a positive effect, but it changes the way that your body uh, does fat oxidation after you're done exercising. Who'd you tell? So they were, uh, they were testing their indirect calorimetry during the exercise and found that there wasn't a huge difference in, um, sorry, a huge difference in metabolics during the exercise, but their amount of calories burned after the exercise, the, okay. the post-exercise and energy expenditure was higher with the protein. So if you're gonna go do some exercise at the gym, maybe drop a shake of protein before you start. Not a lot of carbs, not a lot of fats, just a, a whey protein isolate. Might get you a little, a little extra boost there. there There's go. obviously a lot more detail in this study. They did a really good job of, of comparing groups and comparing a lot of different uh, metrics, uh, but I didn't want to bore you guys. So yeah, shoot us an email, we'll, we'll get you the full thing. And a nice little segue. So um, my topic also involves protein on this one. So yeah. uh, most of the time we think of either like a sample little uh, that you can take with you or you put a scoop in your shaker or just a tub to keep in your car. Well, there's a company called Bade Nutrition that just came out with a dissolvable protein scoop. What's it called? Vade Nutrition. Vade like Vader. Like Vader. V-A-D-E. Uh, they were actually just on Shark Tank showing oh. their stuff off and they reached out to us prior to their episode going out and we were more than happy to uh, onboard them, which is pretty cool. So there should be a link to their product actually in the feed as well. Give it a gander. If you are super Give into convenience and you don't want to get protein powder all over your car and you just want to try something new, Maybe give it a go. It's definitely cool. You can just kind of toss it in your bag and then, mm -hmm. or you can actually just keep it in your shaker whenever you're ready mm -hmm. and it's all good, man. That's super cool. And I would, it probably doesn't taste like much. It's just, right? Can you just toss it in a little just packet? Pro just protein. A little Tide powder protein, right? Yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay, so the second study for me is from the Journal of Exercise Nutrition. It is called, Do Younger and Older Adults Experience Similar Adaptations to Individualized Exercise Training? I'm gonna make this very simple. A lot of people are wondering, can an old person get fit just like a young person? And to give you the absolute summary of this, yeah, yeah, they can. 
the exercises do have to be tuned per the person. Uh, these changes in uh, strength, changes in body composition were relative changes, so percent changes, mm -hmm. but generally the changes were about the same. If you're older, 40, 50, 60, don't feel like you're too far gone. Don't feel like you've, you've you know, gone to the point of no return, because that's just not the case. Your body is pretty much always able mm -hmm. to adapt to exercise. With the right diet, with the right exercise program, you're in for a good time. So, again, if you want to study, shoot me a message, brain.gains, bodybuilding.com, but the answer is, is absolutely yes. So, creatine to the topic. This is a topic that we actually kind of have like a running thing about. Everyone is always super interested in creatine, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about uh, essential amino acids, or if we're talking about diet, or if we're talking about swimming, or if we're, we're talking about the weather, anything. we generally get questions about creatine uh, that day. And so we figured it would be a good idea to just kind of readdress creatine as a whole, take as many questions as we, as we possibly could. We usually have a little summary of, of everything that we want to talk about in a day, and our summary is really short today because we know people are going to have a lot of questions, we know there's going to be a lot of feedback coming from everyone, and so please feel free to just flood the chat with everything you want to know about creatine, and we're going to do our best to, to get through all those specifics. We already have good ones coming in. Uh, we just have a couple points to touch on and then mm -hmm. maybe that'll answer some of the questions as we start. So Alec, what's creatine? Well, my friend, it is the king of supplements or it's an amino acid you want to get down to nitty gritty. Um, how does it affect the body? Think of a fitness goal and frankly, it'll impact it in a positive way. Right, so creatine is a, a group of amino acids all put together. I think it's three amino acids if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, and what it is, is, is think of it as a prerequisite for energy. So your body has a number of different energy systems, different ways that it has the ability to, to help your muscles do what they want to do. And one of those systems is called the phosphocreatine system. And that system is, is in charge of making sure that you have the high power, high intensity energy mm -hmm. for like the first 10, 12 seconds of exercise. So if you're doing a 100 meter sprint or maybe you're lifting a really heavy weight, generally your body pulls that energy from phosphocreatine mm -hmm. first because phosphocreatine turns directly into ATP and that was what your muscles use. So it's just bam, very quick, but it also runs out very fast. Mm -hmm. And so supplementing with creatine bulks up that system. It makes that first line of defense much, much stronger. And so there's a couple other uh, uh, specifics that go along with it and we'll kind of go, go talk to all those, but that's kind of the basics. It mm -hmm. makes that first burst of initial energy much stronger. That's why uh, we recommend, it's, it's, it's good for people of endurance sports to have, but it's not like the vital one for people of endurance sports to have mm -hmm. because after that first 10, 12 seconds, you're, you're not really using creatine mm -hmm. as much anymore. So that's more on fat oxidation, carb oxidation, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so, that's yeah. the fun one. Yeah. So anyway, that's what creatine is. How do you take it? Ooh. Well, you ingest it, you, you drink it. Um, you don't, no, you don't. no, I okay. mean, can't condone things, but okay, um, when it comes down to it, people ask how to take it best. When do I take it? Do I take it at the beginning? Do I take it after a workout? The answer is yes. How so much? Five grams. Right, but Alec, they say take 20 grams. Oh goodness, well, it takes 30 days to load your creatine stores, so just take five grams a day for a month. That's and right. Lo and behold. So there, there, there are two schools of thought with creatine. You can take it five grams a day, mm -hmm. you know, three to five grams a day for over the course of three to four weeks, and you'll get there. You're going to hit a saturation point, and that point is when it's really doing everything that it can mm -hmm. do. Uh, after that, you just want to maintain that three to five grams, mm -hmm. make sure it's always high. Some people want to get the effects sooner. They want to see mm -hmm. the effect of creatine faster than four weeks, because that's a long time, it's a mm -hmm. month. Uh, and so they, they want to take more uh, in a given day. So you'll see people take uh, you know, three and four scoops a day, 15 to 20 grams at a time. Uh, and that's not wrong, it's not bad, and you're not gonna hurt yourself doing it, it's not bad for your, you know, mm -hmm. your, your body in any way. Some people may experience uh, some gastrointestinal issues uh, just from having so much creatine, but a lot of people don't. It's, it's possible, and I've seen it, but it's not as mm -hmm. common. Uh, and you will get to that saturation point a little bit quicker, and then once you hit that first week of 20 grams a day, then you kind of go into that maintenance phase of five mm -hmm. grams. So the answer is either one, but if you just do five grams a day and that's comfortable for you, then I recommend you do that. Mm -hmm. As long as you're working out continuously, you're taking advantage of all the creatine that's there. Yeah, you're it, doing good. As long as, it, as long as you're being compliant with the, compliant and consistent with your creatine consumption, it, it pays off. Right, and as, with a lot of supplements, it's more about being consistent than getting the exact dose, right? If you're taking four grams a day, if you're taking six grams a day, as long as you're doing it every day, out. it's really good. And that's why you see a lot of people formulate pre-workouts without creatine, because not everyone uses their pre-workout every day, but you mm -hmm. want to be using your creatine yep. every day. And so that's, that is what we see there. So uh, where might people get creatine? We see it in a number of different sources. What do we know about, about what people will see? Uh, the different types of creatine, you're gonna see creatine HCL. That's uh, pretty popular out there. You're gonna see a creatine nitrate. 
which is in some products as well, as long as they have a, a patent that's a, or ability to use said patent. And then you see a form that you don't, it's not around as much. It was more, I would say, early 2000s, uh, mid 2000s, it's uh, creatine ethyl ester. Yeah, that one kind of came and went. And then uh, creocaline, which is a, what it's a buffered creatine. It's a newer buffered creatine. I don't know a whole lot of data about it, but at the end of the day, uh, we see a lot of these different kinds, but uh, we, we, we talk about this in all of our articles, that creatine monohydrate really has all the science behind it. It really is where people have been focusing their clinical studies for years and years. Mm -hmm. And so we can, just, we can just say, like, that's what we trust. We know it works really, really well, and uh, the metrics on it are so good that uh, all these other forms would have to be almost like perfect bioavailability, almost perfect mm -hmm. absorption to beat it. And to be honest, it's so cheap and so available to get creatine mono. It's hard to, it's hard to recommend other types. Uh, before we move on to what I would consider kind of the next section of our discussion, let's take a couple questions. Um, we're going to start right at the top and says, uh, Rahul asks, does creatine HCL, HCL get absorbed better than creatine monohydrate? I think the company that first invented uh, or first brought HCL to the landscape did a study or two on absorption with creatine HCL and found that it absorbed really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with that. I'm going to say it absorbed really well because I don't know exactly if, how, the, how it compared to mm -hmm. creatine monohydrate because I know mono also absorbs Very really, well. really well. Uh, I know we can trust five grams a day of mono. I know we can mm -hmm. trust 20 grams over a week and then five grams a day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that creatine HCL is bad if you want to take that and cons if, if, if you want that to be your source and maybe you feel like it's better for your stomach, cool, like that's mm -hmm. creatine, go for it. Um, I, I, I can't say with, with, uh, with, with a lot of confidence that it's better because I honestly don't know. I haven't seen a lot of good studies that show that. Uh, YouTube, uh, Parmar asks, how does creatine help with gains? Alec, how does creatine help with your well, gains? Well, um, it's kind of what we talked about, increasing your ATP storage. So it's your energy currency within your body. Mm -hmm. So power output. So when it comes down to say if you're bench pressing, you're able to get a couple more reps out because you're more power output. That's right. It. And then more reps, you, know, you have a total of, what is it? And higher volume and a lift in the muscle group throughout X time, uh, in, th in theory, hypertrophy. Right, so. so it's not like taking leucine where it's telling your muscles to get larger. Mm -hmm. You're giving your muscles the ability to lift heavier and then that growth is a function of the intensity mm -hmm. uh, that you're able to carry out because of the creatine mm -hmm. is there. So there you go, guys. Uh, are there any weight requirements to be able to take creatine? No. To my knowledge, no. Uh, I know we've seen studies uh, given to uh, high school students, given to people who are overweight. Creatine has been really studied kind of across the spectrum. Uh, you know, from a company standpoint, we don't talk, we don't like to give suggestions on supplements for uh, younger people. We always say talk to your doctor before you mm -hmm. go uh, into that realm. And so if that's something you'd like to talk with them about, I definitely recommend it. Uh, but from my understanding, there's really no weight requirement. Uh, maybe if you are are very, very small. If you're under 100 pounds, you might decrease that dose from five grams just a little bit because five grams is generally assumed for the average human, which mm -hmm. is considered, what, 160 pounds, I think, is average. So if you're below 100, maybe just drop down to three. Maybe not in the United States. Who knows? Yeah. But um, as, as far as I know, the answer is your body is very good at, at doing away with extra if you mm -hmm. consume too much. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much mm -hmm. about overdoing it, mm -hmm. uh, especially since people take 20 grams a day all the time. If you feel like five grams is a lot, know that mm -hmm. people take four times that almost every day. So. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to come down to preference. If you feel like five grams is too much for your gut, slow down. If you feel like you can mm -hmm. take more, go for it. And this is a fun question because we've looked into this multiple times. Maybe something down the pipeline where we're going to really extrapolate on this. But on Facebook, we, Rahul asks, which food boosts creatine levels in the body? This is a fun one. So, fun fact, you have to eat two pounds of red meat to, a lot. to equate to five grams of creatine. Two pounds. Two pounds. So 32, 32 ounces. Steak. That's a lot. I like prime rib. I like ribeyes, but. But yeah, I mean, you, usually, yeah. you go to the restaurant and you get a 16 ounce steak and that's like a decent steak. It's mm -hmm. pretty good. And so I don't know if you can imagine every day coming home from work, 32 ounces of steak. It's a dream world, but it's also very expensive. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, if you wanted to get your creatine, also beta alanine would come in as a part of that steak as well. True. But oh, man, that'd be tough. Uh, I, mean, again, I think creatine powder may be a little bit more efficient. Yeah, it's quicker. And um, yeah, usually it's going to be meat sources, primarily uh, red meat being the higher concentration of one. That's why like beef protein is so popular. In theory, it has a, a higher naturally occurring creatine count than a whey. But yeah, no, that's 
Raul, it's better just to consume it. All right, or... Ed asks from YouTube, do I need to cycle off of creatine? No, you don't. It is actually a really great source of energy for you, and so you can continuously use it, and uh -huh. there's really no nothing that states that you need to cycle off of it because your body doesn't uh, uh, sensitize to it in any way. It's not affecting you like a steroid would or, or like caffeine would. It's it's not a stimulant at all. Uh, go for it, man. You can, you can stay on it as long as you like, and I know that's exactly what a salesman would love to say about their product, <laughs> uh, seeing as we sell creatine but I can tell you from a science standpoint, mm -hmm. there's really no biological reason to cycle on Well, that and the fact is your body makes it anyway. So yeah, to it's, a degree, yeah. uh, it's, it's a non-essential nutrient. Right. So yeah, you can don't have to Yeah, cycle Alex, off. right, your body does make some. You walk around with your glass about three quarters full, and so supplementing mm -hmm. with it really just takes it right up to the top. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take it, it's not like you're not gonna have creatine. It's not like your body's not gonna be able to lift weights, right? This is just taking you that extra step. True. So uh, what do you think, Alec, what's next? Ooh, let's hear what, what's another good one. We've got what, again, to reiterate, everything is on topic with these questions right now and it's outstanding. Yeah, you guys are killing it. So, now my creatine monohydrate from YouTube Jeffrey doesn't fully dissolve. Is this an issue? Which one is it? Uh, towards the bottom there. Oh, okay. I wouldn't say it's an issue. I think the uh, quicker you put it down, the better. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. To me, I think that's more of a sensory kind of uh, kind of what you prefer. It could have been a manufacturing issue for that particular batch it could as have well. Been. I, I usually don't have issues with creatine mono dissolving. It usually goes right in. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple strategies, just from a chemical standpoint, if you had uh, lukewarm tap water, it would dissolve better than cold water. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you had more water, it would dissolve a little bit better. Uh, but if you're worried about any sort of negative side effects to creatine that's kind of a little floaty there, I would, it wouldn't worry about it at all. A little floaty. And then Sherelle on YouTube, is creatine hydrochloride better than creatine monohydrate? We addressed that a little bit. Yeah, not according to the... No, know. it's there's there's nothing to, nothing definitive to say that it's better. There's more data with monohydrate. Uh, Omer from Facebook has a really good question. Can I take it while I'm trying to lose weight? Absolutely. Absolutely. So say if you're trying to get higher volume in your workouts um, when you're trying to lose weight, because frankly that burns more calories. Um, if you're able to get a couple more reps out, that's your body using more force, which in theory is burning more calories. All right, and so this kind of brings us to a question that I see a bunch of times right here. So we're gonna kill like 10 birds with this stone right now. Let's talk about creatine and bloating, mm -hmm. uh, creatine and water balance. Where does that sit for you? Where does that sit? Uh, like most things, if you don't drink enough water, you're gonna have a little GI distress. But yeah, it definitely pulls more water in. That's just the nature of creatine. Um, the osmotic pressure gets kind of tweaked with a bit. But frankly, just drink is drink. You should do a gallon at least a day, anyway. That's a lot of water. It's not that bad. It's lot. not that hard. I'm already at I'm already at the three quarters of a gallon, and it's ten in the morning Killing here. It, man. So, uh, so creatine is what's called an osmolite, which means it generally pulls water towards where it is concentrated. So, when you first consume it, it is concentrated mm -hmm. in your gut, and so it pulls water towards it, which is what can cause gastric distress if mm -hmm. you have a bunch of it all at once. Once it absorbs into your body, once it's in your cells, you now have that osmolite in your cells, mm -hmm. and that pulls more water into the muscle cells of your body. Now, this is what causes the, the people to actually gain just a little bit of weight as they're taking creatine. Mm -hmm. They're not getting fatter, their muscles aren't getting uh, uh, more muscular, holding they're just water. holding a little bit more water. But if you're asking, can I take this while I'm losing weight? Sure, you can take it because you're going to be increasing your intensity, you're going to be burning mm -hmm. more calories with every workout. Mm -hmm. uh, from a caloric balance standpoint, you're going to be doing much better. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be holding just a little bit more water, which is why I think you'll see people who are in competition stay away from creatine kind of towards the end. Is that correct? Some people do. It depends, again, like most things, it depends on your conditioning. If you are somebody that believes that I have a little bit of water to lose, you might just not be as conditioned as you should be. But um, when, I, when I compete, I don't pull creatine. Okay, that's just there you me. go. Uh, okay, so that answers a bunch of them, so that's cool. How many months can I take creatine, Rohan? You can pretty much all take, of them. Yeah, all of them. All of them. Uh, will I gain weight? Yes, we talked about that. Uh, how many times a day should I consume creatine? What about off versus a workout day? So Neo, that's a good question. Uh, we talked about it just a little bit earlier. Five grams a day, every day, workout, now workout. Uh, it's one of those ones that you wanna take most days uh, and I would treat it kind of like a multivitamin in that yep. way. Uh, is it hard on your kidneys? So Sherelle from YouTube asks, is it hard on your kidneys? We actually have really good data on creatine over the course of two and three years and they look at uh, uh, biochemical uh, uh, markers from your kidneys, from your liver, from every major organ in your body, and have found really no change in, in how they're functioning and how they're doing. Mm -hmm. So according to what we know, according to the science in front of us, no, it has no negative effect on those outcomes, even over long periods of time, which is really cool. All right, uh, okay, so we talked about bloating, we talked about weight gain. I see this rumor all the time, Alec. Is it gonna, is it gonna make me lose my hair, my, my beautiful hair? 
My thick head of hair has been taking creatine for 10 years. And yeah, that's happened. anecdotal though. That's anecdotal, that's very fair. No, you're not gonna lose your hair. There's nothing, nothing that we know of from a biochemical standpoint that would tell us that creatine, an energy source for your muscles, would cause you to lose hair, which is associated with hormone balance and a lot of th other things. Genetic there, so. precursors, all that jazz. Yes, so if you want to know about your hair, look at your mother's dad. I think that's the best description from what I hear, right? So why Your mother's hell? father. I think that holds more standing. Look at standing. your family tree. You're, you're going to be great. I believe in you. Uh, okay, what about, uh, oh, is it a steroid? I see this one all the time. Is creatine a steroid, Alec? No, it's amino acid. That's right. So a steroid is a fatty-based compound, and it's mm. a, a signaling molecule within the body, something like testosterone. It's cholesterol-based. This is not any of those things. Uh, I guess the argument can be made that the... Uh, uh, it has an effect on how your body does things, which is you know similar to uh, how steroids do. It helps with your workouts, which mm -hmm. people associate with testosterone. But no, it is not testosterone. It's not an anabolic in any way. It is an energy-providing substrate. And mm -hmm. so, no, it is not a steroid. Thus, it will not have any effect on acne in any way. Uh, it should not give you any uh, roid rage at all. It's not associated with those in any way, shape, or no. form. So, no. don't worry, guys. It's just it's it's just energy. It's, it's energy. just good stuff. Speaking of I that, you. speaking of that, we got a retort from Neo, the one himself, uh, caffeine versus creatine, which Ooh. has a better effect. Dep Why not both? Why not both? <laughs> um, so one is a stimulant, the other is just like we said, it's an amino acid that's increasing energy within the cell. Take both. That's right. So, That's so with, with creatine, remember we said that creatine is a prerequisite to the phosphocreatine system, which is what creates ATP for your muscles, which is what they use to contract, which mm -hmm. is what allows you to lift. Caffeine is a, is a neural stimulant. So it, it actually activates your, 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 sorry, your uh, neural system in a way that makes you feel more awake, mm -hmm. more aware, more energetic. It's not actually physically giving your muscles more energy to work with. Mm -hmm. Now in theory, it could mobilize the energy that you already have. It could tell your body that it needs to uh, break down some of the glycogen that you have in your body to activate more mm -hmm. uh, ATP that's available. But caffeine is there to make you feel energetic, to mm -hmm. give you the motivation to be in the gym and to maybe run that extra uh, uh, a half mile on the treadmill, but it's not physically giving your muscles the extra energy. I would also say that creatine is, is safer than caffeine in that uh, if you take double the dose of creatine that you would normally take in a day, if you take 10 grams instead of five, you're not gonna notice any difference. It's gonna feel fine, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna be good to go. Tastes. If you take double the dose of caffeine in a day, you know, normally we have, say it's a, say it's a 300 milligram caffeine pre-workout, if all of a sudden I take 600 milligrams, mm -hmm. we're getting into a, into a zone where that's a lot of creatine and can be somewhat dangerous for some people. So uh, stimulants are a little bit more uh, interesting in that way and definitely uh, require more discussion, but they are not the same. They work in two very different systems, uh, but taken correctly, they can be taken together yep. very effectively. So. And here's a fun question that we haven't been asked yet. Sarah on Facebook, thoughts on creatine for women? 100%. 100%. Um, there's plenty of, uh, what's outstanding with the fitness industry lately is that there's such an uprise of female athletes, performance athletes, pro power lifters, strong women. They use creatine. It's outstanding. They're going to use it for the same reason why a guy would and it will benefit you in aspects that you hadn't had before. Um, you're not gonna metabolize it differently. You're not gonna, it's, you're a human being. Creatine's creatine. Uh, in all caps, Papo from YouTube, should <laughs> I go with BCAAs or creatine for gains? I think that's another situation where it's, why not both? Why not both? Again, we talked about BCAAs a little bit earlier. We talked about how leucine is actually an activator of the mTOR system. It actually tells your muscles to grow when they're in a, a, a position where they have the, the nutrients ready to do so. But leucine generally, it can be. It generally is not used for energy. Whereas mm -hmm. creatine directly feeds into the phosphocreatine system, directly gives your muscles the energy they need to lift hard and heavy. Uh, and allows you to increase that intensity. So they work in two very different ways. If you're asking me to choose, generally we tell people creatine first because yep. it's so cheap, it's so easy, and so effective, and so well studied uh, to be very, you know, a very good, strong supplement. So it's on the iron if, you, if, you're, if you're telling me I have to choose, I say creatine, but I really want to tell you that both of them are fine, both of them work great, and both of them work very differently so they can work mm -hmm. together. So. Uh, Marcus asks, which one is better, pill or powder? Whichever one you like taking. Honestly, it it's, doesn't matter. Your body's gonna consume it the same either way. I it think just, powders are a little bit easier because you can get a big bulk scoop and put it in with your protein shake or your afternoon lemonade or whatever you want. Uh, five grams worth of creatine as a pill is five pills, six pills. It's a lot of pills. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you like taking pills, sure, you can do that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think powder's a little easier. Um, but that's completely up to you. It, it, delivery does not matter in that way because the pill is going to dissolve in your stomach very, very quickly and 
then it's just gonna release the powder that's inside the cap, so there you go. Uh, what else we got? Uh, is creatine good for older people and athletes? Jacobite, that's a good question. The answer is yes. So uh, people who are older generally tend to deal with something called sarcopenia, which means your muscles are starting to uh, wear away a little bit. They start to shrink just because generally people who are older don't tend to use them quite as much. Mm -hmm. And so anything that we can do to give those muscles the extra energy mm -hmm. they need the, to increase that intensity. Remember we talked about a little bit earlier that people who are older doesn't mean that they mm -hmm. can't get their gains back. And so if we can help that process in any way, creatine is absolutely able to do so. So there we go. Uh, let's see. Ride for a cause. Suggest the most effective intake. Whey with creatine or separately whey protein and creatine on a different interval, pre or post or intra workout. What would you suggest? Ride for a cause? Good question. I'm gonna let Alec take this one. Um, which it's your preference. Myself, I prefer to put it with my pre-workout before I lift. Um, some people like to do it with their protein afterwards. It's really what you're able to do consistently and you remember to put it in with whatever you're consuming it with. If you prefer to have it with like orange juice in the morning, that's you. Uh, there's plenty of data to show that, that uh, carbohydrates, simple sugars alongside creatine uh, has plenty of benefit. Um, yeah, there's really whatever you're able to actually ingest it every day, do so. Like Tyler brought up earlier, treat it like a multivitamin and be consistent and good things happen. Uh, Abraham asks a pretty relevant question. Does it matter if you take it during your workout or does it give you a better boost of energy if you take it right as you're working out? And the answer is unfortunately no, it doesn't mm -hmm. work acutely like mm -hmm. that. So, so creatine fits into a category of supplements that I like to call ones that are chronically taken. Mm -hmm. Means ones that you have to take over a period of mm -hmm. time and then they slowly build up within your system. Mm -hmm. So caffeine is the opposite. Caffeine is kind of an acute supplement that I take right now and in 20 minutes from now I feel it. I feel mm -hmm. it going, it's working, I feel good, I'm going to use it right now. Creatine's not that way, no. which is why we keep saying like you can take it whenever you want through the day, you can take it before, you can take it after. As long as you're taking it every day, as long as you're maintaining consistency there, you're going to be good. Uh, it's, it's just about being mm -hmm. direct and being consistent, like I said. And one more that I really wanted to uh, talk about, uh, Facebook Diamond Creatine Stacking with Beta Alanine. Thoughts? Yes. Uh, if you've been an avid listener to um, or uh, viewer of our show, you'll know our love for both the creatine and beta alanine. Um, myself, I've been a little bit more of an endurance kind of guy as of late. How many miles have you run this month, Alec? I hit 188 this month. My man. And, um, but beta alanine, every time. If it was a non-lift day and I was running, beta alanine and creatine I'm using for their particular purpose. Um, and obviously with caffeine, if we're going to dip into that again. Go, yeah. But um, for delay of lactic acid buildup, Bait Island's King. Every day. Every day. All right, before we sign off, we got a couple of announcements for you guys. We have a couple of new products and flavors for you here that we wanted to let you know about. Uh, products on site, we now officially are selling the Muscle Tech Vapor One, Jujube Gummy, and Rainbow Candy, Rainbow Fruit Candy pre workout. It's actually a pretty good pre workout. We're pretty excited to look at that one. Cellucor Super HD Ultra, the Redcon Moab Cherry Lime and Grape. What's Moab? Moab is, what is it, mother of all muscle builders. builders. That's yeah. what it was, mother, mother of, of all, all builders. builders. So the Red <laughs> one muscle builder in cherry lime and grape, and then the Vade Nutrition Whey Iso Dissolvable Protein mm -hmm. Pouch yep. is now available on bodybuilding.com as well. We have a couple new flavors as well. The PE Science Select Protein Strawberry Cheesecake is now available, and then this one really caught me off guard when we saw it getting on board. Uh, EVL has now released a BCA Energy in Jalapeno lime. Jalapeno lime. So that'll be good. Uh, a couple deals for you guys. We have some line drives going on, aka the entire line of products from these companies is now 15% off. Uh, good old BBCom Signature, ProSups, Muscle Farm, GAT, Mutant, Isatory, EFX, Cobra, and many, many more. Make sure you check out bodybuilding.com to go see what we got going on there. That's all we got. Guys, one. thank you so much for being here with us today. That's it for Brain Gains. I hope we'll see you next time when, uh, on the next episode. My name is Tyler. This is Alec. Until next time, keep lifting.